Hello friends, if you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're a subscriber or a fan, welcome back. Today's topic is religion and mental health, anxiety disorders. I don't have anything to say, so let's get on with the video. I'm dealing with anxiety disorders together because unlike other disorders in the DSM, they all have anxiety in common, whereas you have psychotic disorders with different symptoms and mood disorders with different symptoms. Anxiety is a basic human emotion consisting of fear and inner restlessness that appears in threatening or unfamiliar situations and is always accompanied by a physical stress reaction. Anxiety disorders, on the other hand, are defined by a longer lasting, intensified, and unfounded anxieties that are usually psychobiologically driven. They lead to distress and can become a major handicap to the person who suffers. First, I'd like to list some reasons of why religion is still around despite scientific and technological advances. Religion is a coping behavior allowing people to make sense of suffering. It provides a sense of control over internal and external forces and it promotes pro-sociality through cooperation and mutual support. Religious beliefs provide meaning and purpose in difficult times. They generally encourage a positive worldview. Role models can be found in holy books that promote the acceptance of suffering. People derive a sense of indirect control from these beliefs, and these beliefs offer community support. The teachings of religion can provoke anxiety and exacerbate guilt and fear that can interfere with quality of life, but this anxiety can also prevent harmful behaviors. In addition, the beliefs and practices of religious persons can comfort them, increase feelings of control, enhance the sense of security, and boost confidence. Wink and Scott did research on a group of individuals for nearly 30 years from middle age to later life. They were interested in the impact of religious beliefs on death anxiety. They found no linear relationship between these two variables. Death anxiety was highest among the moderately religious, while lowest among those who were either highly or minimally religious. In this context, moderately religious means that the person believes in an afterlife but does not participate in religious practices. From this data, we can conclude that it is the degree of religious involvement that reduces death anxiety in the religious. In some instances, religious beliefs can actually reinforce neurotic tendencies, pile on the shame and guilt, and restrict rather than enhance life. In these cases, religion may be used to avoid making life changes one needs to make. It is important to realize, however, that religion does not generally have a negative impact. Religiosity has been found to have a positive impact on mental health but there have also been contradictory results. Higher intrinsic religiosity, or living a religion, has been correlated to higher risk of psychiatric disorders in general and depression in particular. Recent research suggests that for mental health, religious beliefs in general are not as important as the religious coping strategies employed by the religious person. Coping strategies that have been found 
that have a positive effect on mental health are higher worship frequency, religious involvement, prayer, and reading of scriptures. On the other hand, people who employ coping strategies such as wondering if God has abandoned them or believing in a vengeful God has been found consistently to be correlated to negative psychological adjustment and worse mental health status and treatment outcomes. Well, friends, I think that's a good place to stop. As you can see from this show, there is mixed results when it comes to anxiety and religion. Some studies show a positive correlation, while other studies show a negative correlation, and a lot of it depends on the religious coping strategies. There is, however, one anxiety disorder above all others that seems to be more correlated with religion than any other anxiety disorder, and that is obsessive compulsive disorder. If you would like me to do a separate show on OCD, let me know in the comments. My Twitter, Discord, email, and PayPal account uh, links are in the description as well as the links to my sources for this show. Um, so catch me on Twitter or Discord. If you like this content, please hit the like button, press the subscribe button, and if you would like to be notified when I come out with new content, hit the bell next to the subscribe button. Question everything and never be afraid. Here are a couple of videos from my library. If you have not seen them, go ahead and watch them. Leave comments in the comment section. I love hearing from you. Until next time, friends, goodbye.